is right. I am back again. Y'all know who I am, Lockout Men. Welcome back to another podcast for you guys for today. And I told you guys I was going to get them. I told you. See, y'all didn't believe me. Y'all said that uh, Lockout Men, y'all, you, you wasn't going to get that man on right quick. And I, and I told you guys that I was going to bring this man on so he can talk about his ordeal. You know what I'm saying? You, you guys did not believe a brother. Yo, what's up? Lockout Men right here. Back again with another podcast for you guys. Uh, well, remember the, uh, remember the podcast that I did for you guys about uh, maybe about a day ago or something like that? I know I posted it like last night or something like that. And I was talking about this truck driver that was getting dissed up at Burger King. And I said in that podcast that I reached out to him, well, he's here. Let me welcome everybody, Chris Sensing. Did I mention, did, did, did I pronounce it right? Sensing? Yeah, that, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. Sensei. Okay, Chris Sensing. What's going on, brother man? I'll just sit here chilling, buddy. All right. So, so you say you uh you say you a day cabber. You you uh I, how long you been in the business, man? How long you been uh trucking out here? Uh, uh twenty years. This is my twentieth year. Oh, uh, this your twentieth year? Yeah. Man, tell tell me tell tell me some tell tell me some stories, man. What what have you seen out here in 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 twenty oh. years, man? I just about everything. I used to travel a uh, whole lot out west, Arizona, New Mexico area when I first started. And after about a year over the road, I found a day cab job here in the city. They hired me on, and I've been day cabbing in around Middle Tennessee ever since. Really. Okay. Okay. Well, for my for my uh, for my viewers and for my listeners out there that don't know who you are, man, let them know who you are and where you're from. Yeah, Chris Finsang from uh, Nashville. Actually, from White Bluff, Tennessee, that's where I live. I work in Nashville. And uh, I work at a trailer, what it's called, Trailer Service and Rental. And we're the Great Dane dealer in Nashville as far as Great Dane semi-trailers. And we're the parts dealer. Uh, we also do parts, and we also have 400 rental trailers that we rent out okay. for various you know, construction companies or just whoever. And we also do trailer repair. That's all we do is semi-trailer repair. And we do box work uh, for like rider trucks, Penske trucks like that. But a lot of our major accounts are the big touring companies in Nashville. Okay. Um, okay. Do it for, for, for a lot of the country music stars, stuff like that. So, and I, that's what I do. I, I bogey trailers everywhere. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you like a, so you like a, a all around, well, I guess, I guess yard jockey would be, would be, wouldn't, wouldn't be a good, wouldn't be a good thing. You like a, uh, a jockey to grab all the trailers from all different places all over the world, pretty much. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, I do it all. Uh, I, I set up rental trailers. I go pick up the trailers, uh, whether they're loaded or not. Really doesn't matter. But uh, uh, we, what you know, we pick up concert trailers. I'm you know using downtown a lot, around the stadium a lot. Uh, so I'm pretty much everywhere. Now, now I did, I, I did. Uh, I, I did one in the well. It wasn't a concert, but I, I did go into uh, into one of these stadiums down in Florida. Man, yeah. the the tightness in there will make your skin crawl. Have you have you oh, been yeah. in, have you been in any places like that? Well, uh, yeah. There's a there's a new convention center in Nashville. Mm -hmm. I think it's maybe five six years old. I guess. And it's really amazing the way they got it done. But you 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 run your trucks. It's not really underneath. It's on ground level, and it'll run you up to the second story and run you around. And you just drive them right into the hotel, right into the convention center. Wow! And uh, it's pretty cool. But yeah, they have some big trade shows there. Big, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of trucking shows uh, that they have there. Are so they I get an opportunity to do that pretty much every year? Are they? Are they? Are are they doing? sleepers up in there or or they they yeah, just do yeah. uh the day cabs no sleepers everything are you serious trailers 
Sleeper, yeah, you see my the whole everything, the whole fifty, the, the whole fifty three footer slash ten yeah. extra yeah. feet up front, and it's yeah, wow, I, I've had to put them in there. <laughs> wow, I thought, uh, you know, I thought going down in the, um, going in, going down in the uh, in the craft caves over in Missouri was something. Uh, yeah, I done that, done that. Man, that's woo, yeah, that's that was my. First year of trucking, I did that. Oh, that was that, yeah, that was an experience. <laughs> you know how it is, first year. Yeah, you that, yeah, you get that you you get all the experience in your in your first year, man. For real, I mean, oh yeah, you get. At, at, oh, go ahead. At butt stays at butt stays tight. I, you you know. know, right? I I I know <laughs> I know a few of them. I know a few of them that. Oh yeah, oh try to oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> man, so twenty, so uh, twenty years, man. Uh, so you started. Yeah, um, you what? What made you get into trucking? And and did you go to school for it, or did you? Uh, or yeah. was your grandfather? Uh, no, I'm PTDI certified professional truck driving through Tennessee Tech University, and I actually started out uh, as a, as a mechanic. I was going into automotive technology and. I knew after about a year in, this is not really what I want to do. But what really got me back in school, I was playing volleyball one night, busted my knee. Ouch. And, uh, yeah, they had to put a cadaver ligament in, which put me out about nine months. So I wow. thought, well, I was going to go to school, you know. Well, you, you, you wait, wait, busted, hold, hold up, hold up, Chris, Chris, Chris. You, you did all that playing volleyball? Yeah, busted my knee, and that's what that's what got me down to where I just said, if I'm not going to work, I'm going to go back to school. And so I started, and, and then after about a year of uh, automotive technology, I said, uh, I don't want to do this. <laughs> it's not going to be what I want to do the rest of my life. So I had another option, and they, and I went into trucking, and it's the three month course. The, right. uh, you know, it, they're pretty stringent, and uh, so and that was back in. 99 to 2000 january 2000 okay. right okay. and um uh, so after that and uh it took off and i haven't been jobless since you know of course you know you get you get some good companies you get bad companies but uh what i'm with now they treat us good and and i get home pretty reasonable you know at night so now you that's say one you, good thing about it now you say you've been day cabin it ever since but have you been with this company since uh since day two, or or you've been with a few no, companies? No, I've been here, uh, it'll be 13 years in uh, June. I'll be with this company. Oh, okay. That's what's and, up. Uh, yeah, and I used to haul, I've hauled scrap metal. Uh, I've hauled milk for Kroger through Quickway. I hauled, uh, that was, I think that was my first day cab job, really. It was Quickway, running nights mm -hmm. uh, to Kroger's around here in Middle Tennessee. Southern Alabama, or Northern Alabama, Southern Kentucky. And uh, that's what really, uh, uh, that's where I got my, my, you know, paid the hard dues in, you know. But uh, what was, after that, I just, you know, it kind of took off. What was, was, was some of your toughest, uh, other than the conventions and everything, what are some of your toughest blindsides uh, backing uh, you, you could think of, being that you're uh, a day cat? Well, now, I know it's a lot easier the blind side in a in a yeah. day cab than than the sleeper. So what what is some of the what are some of the toughest areas in in your in your mind that you being that a sleeper tried to you know tried to do? Yeah, well, yeah, and it, 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 you know the day cabs do have advantage. But what I do, um, I wouldn't work with with a, a, a big conventional because I'm home every night. But for one, <clears throat> but uh, we go set up a lot of construction sites with rental trailers mm -hmm. they put their construction equipment in it so they don't have to haul it back and forth mm -hmm. and we do that for a lot of construction big time construction companies up here and so you you don't really know what you're going to get into uh <laughs> i've been stuck several times I had to get bulldozers to pull me out i mean you've had to back and i've had to back about a mile down the road uh and, and especially when i first got there we've had some of these rental trailers that's been on lots for maybe 14 to 15 years wow. they've rented them and so I've had one in, uh, matter of fact, just right outside of Nashville. I went to get, it's probably been about three or four years ago, and I couldn't get it for one because they're going to have to cut the tree out of the middle of it. It had been there so long. Wow. And that's no lie. In the back of a field. Okay. And uh, behind a, it, you know, it's, it, it, I could, you know, there's several, uh, but 
through it all, I've always learned something too, you know, which has always helped. Right. I've always tried to learn and, and be better at what I'm doing. And, uh, it, uh, I, you know, you, you learn sometimes the hard way well, and you know, making you, your mistakes and, you know, you know, trucking, truck, trucking is, 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 it's a learning thing every day, every day. Right. It's not, it is. it's not, it is. It's, it, everybody keeps saying, everybody keeps saying, Oh, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. And it's, yeah, yeah. I know you know what you're doing, but you know, the, the person that says that, uh, that if you know it all in trucking, then you need to hang your keys up. You agree with that right. statement? Yeah. Yeah. I learned and I love it. I mean, if you're going to do it and you're going to do it right, and you're going to do it for a, a career, you open yourself up, make, you know, you're all what you can learn something every day. Cause I, you know, my first couple, two, three years, I, you know, I thought, yeah, I knew it. No, I did not. And I'm learning just like I to get an example today. I went to pick up a rental trailer at um, Purina. Uh, feeds up here in Nashville and couldn't understand. I was trying to get it off their lot because they wanted it off their lot. And I got down the road a little bit and I noticed my back axle was off about two inches mm -hmm. on the left side and in about two inches on the right side. Well, there's a problem. Yeah, you can't drive. <laughs> and, 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 uh, your first two or three years, you're not going to notice that. But, you know, if you see, I, I see that axle move back, I said, I got a big problem. I pulled over and both of my springs were busted under there. They had busted the spring. It was the whole axle was just barely hanging on in the shocks. Wow. So, and every time I would hit the brakes, I mean, that back axle just popped jumping, you know, jumping down the road. So, how, and so how, you know, how was you able to get it to where it needed to be? Very carefully. <laughs> Very carefully. Because I'm in the middle. I mean, you're in the middle of driving, and I'm not going to. And, you know, I felt like. And, and a lot of that, too, and you grow with this. Now, my first year, too, mm -hmm. and the company I work for gives me the gratitude and opportunity. Hey, you call it. You know, how you feel. You're driving a truck. You call it. Mm -hmm. And a lot of other bigger companies wouldn't let you do that because there's certain so many rules. Ours is a smaller company. Uh, you know, and, and they, that's what I like about it. Cause they kind of give me the ball on, on, you know, the driving in don't, don't micromanage what I do. I'm the one driving this truck and I felt like it can make good. So I went very slow because we are a shop and if anything happened, I can have a mobile guy there in about 15 minutes, you know, but, uh, I felt like it, it wouldn't, you know, it wasn't as unsafe as it would look, I guess you could say, but I got it back just fine. You just got to be careful. But my first couple of years, I'd have never done that. Well, you know, but through the years, you've kind of learned, you know, you know, small companies, you know, I'm 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 with a small outfit um, and me and my fleet manager, you know, we we get along well, you know, we get along well enough that he, you know, he pretty much, you know, gives me the ball and run with it. You know what I'm saying? And right. with small right. comp and and with small companies like that, you know, they 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 give you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more freedom on how you want to operate your truck, you know. So yeah, small right. a small company for you know, I I think a small company, you know, that been around for a good you know for a good while, you know, you don't want it, you don't want to get with a small company that maybe just starting. You know what I'm saying? You might right. you might want to get with yeah. a small company that that at least got some years behind them, so you know that you don't have to worry about job security. So, so yeah, yeah. small companies. I, I I would suggest you know get get into a big company first. You know, get your feet wet, get your experience. You know, get everything yeah. you need to know, and then down the line. You can you can move towards a, a smaller company, a better company, and all like that. Yeah, because y'all everybody pays their dues in this industry. You know, you're gonna pay your dues first couple of years. You know, and I the job I do now, I couldn't have done it my first couple, two or three, even five years in probably because there's just so much more entailed into this job as far as experience, where you're at. Um, you have to be on point. You got to be backing like a mother, you know, a lot, mm -hmm. uh, and really good and you're real close to a lot of things. And so my first couple of years, I wouldn't, you know, I, this wouldn't have been a good job if you can't, cause I, if I can't do the job here, they'll find somebody who can, oh, cause yeah. it is a little bit tedious, you know, oh, yeah. it's not, it, it's for experienced people. And, uh, because it, but like I said, they let me run it the way I want to run it. And that's what gives me the freedom of uh, of what I like in this job now, and in this industry. Now, let know? me ask you this. Do you agree? Uh, how can I say this? Do you agree, like, if 
you know, like a lot of a, a lot of a lot of YouTubers, a lot of a lot of you know, a lot of quote unquote new drivers says that is, you know, they they want you in in order to get a local job or or a local you know a local driving job such as yours, uh, it's gonna take around two you know about a year to a year and a half. Do you think that is you know if if the person that's coming into this into this game and they do their homework, they can find a local position, right? You can. Now, so like I said, some people at a year and a half are better than others at a year and a half. Mm-hmm. You know, and it just depends on drivers, and and some people just got a knack for it. I, I get drivers all the all the time coming in. And no, no joke. And I'm um, not putting it because I love all of them. I love truck, but they, I'll have to back the trailer because they can't back. Okay. And and so that that tells me a lot. And plus, and we're getting a lot of um, I don't know, uh, um, different. I, 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 and I can tell take, this take just by time. coming in for, to, to our shop. Take your time. No, we get a lot of different nationalities. There's a lot of more. When I started. There wasn't as many people from around the world, right. okay? Immigrants, I, could, I guess you could say, that's trucking now. And so uh, uh, we get. I'm seeing a lot more as far as people from out of the country coming in and trucking, you know, because there is a truck, there is a driver shortage, and has been for a while, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. And and but I, I'm, you're seeing a whole lot more. Um, it's multinational. Uh, uh, trucking, I guess you could say. Yeah. Uh, and nothing wrong with that at all. But uh, I, we're having to adapt to a lot of things because a lot of times it's it's sometimes because I go to a lot of a lot of terminals and you know, a lot of places and this is where I heard about um, the uh, problem with the drivers having you know getting food and getting something to eat and even me as you can see I was having problems in Nashville mm-hmm. uh, getting something to eat and so just by by just going in everywhere and, and talking to the guys and hearing it. Um, then me having the same uh, issue, uh, that's how all this kind of came about with the video. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So, so, so how's this? Uh, how how has how has this uh, pandemic affect you, man? I mean, in in all your 20 years, in all my 50 years, I haven't seen nothing like this. And I only been in the tr- I only been in the truck for five years. This this is my fifth year truck. Right. And right, in my right. in my fifty years, I, I I never I never seen an epidemic of this size before. How how has this uh, right. how has this pandemic uh, uh, affect you guys? Well, I, are you fifty years old? Oh no, I'm not fifteen. No, no, bro, I'm fifty. Oh, uh, uh, 50. 50. 50. Well, that's what I said. Fifty. Oh yeah, I'm fifty. That's why I asked <laughs> <laughs> when you said yes. I said, "Well, I'm fifty. Uh, anyway, it. Well, it, you know, it, it's affected us all. I mean, it, but it's affected my wife. She owns her own cleaning business. Well, and we raised three uh, grandchildren mm-hmm. uh, right now. And so now that she's home, and I'm, you know, thankful and blessed to be working. Exactly. And uh, exactly. so it, now that she's not right now and, and, and homeschooling, it's affected us that way. It's affected us, as you know, at the supermarket. There's, it's getting better. Uh, I was there, uh, I think, Monday at a Walmart up here. And but I, I'm trying to go at different times. I think you know that that may maybe the crowd will be down and they'll have more stock. And it was it was a little bit better, but you're still struggling to get items, uh, just like everybody else. Right. Um, uh, as far as uh, our end in business, well, our business has increased, and it just keeps you know we can't keep up as far as uh, what we do, trailer repair and things like that. So it it tremendous on our end, but. Uh, especially in Nashville, and I've I've had it more than one time. And my theory, I usually and normally take my lunch every day. Uh, I got a good wife; she fixes me breakfast, you know, biscuits, and I got good lunches. But since all this has happened and the the, the scarcity at the supermarket, and I'm trying since I am still working, I figure well, I can't find what I need or what I want. I guess you could say the supermarket a lot of the time, so I'll eat out a little bit more and support more of the local businesses. Mm-hmm. But I am still working, and I usually get me a couple hamburgers, maybe twice a month at that, really, and that's the truth. Sometimes I don't even do that, 
But here lately, I've tried to, you know, a couple, two or three times a week, go in and get a get a taco somewhere and support a local business or go up to a window, you know. And uh, Hardee's has been good in Nashville. Uh, they've been real good uh, as far as <laughs> uh, getting food. They'll let you come up to, you know, the window. They'll come out to you. Uh, they've been tremendous. But just so happens that that certain day I went to that Burger King Let's, and I went through the line, and I was just trying to support them. Let's, you know, let's uh, let's let's get into that right quick for 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 a hot second. This uh, this uh, Burger King situation right here. Um, you went up to the window, and this happened. Yeah. Let me uh see if I can let me see if I can get the volume on that right quick. <laughs> Hold on. By the way, I said Elm Hill Pike that it, but it's on Lebanon Road. Mm -hmm. uh, I kind of misquote because I was a little frustrated and I forgot where I was at the moment. <laughs> <So> <laughs> it's on actually Lebanon Pike. <laughs> so I was in the car riding right up here, I'd get a hamburger. But since I'm a truck driver out here trying to work, I can't get a hamburger. So we have to follow the rules that we're told. It's above my, I, and I'm just following the rules. So this Burger King on uh, Elm Hill Pike will not serve truck drivers because we can't get in line. So we serve anybody that can come to our it is buffering right now, but uh, that didn't answer my question. I'm in. But uh, let's talk. Let's talk about that, man. So you, you like, like I said in the video, all you wanted was a hamburger, man. Like that, that's right, all you right, wanted. That's all I wanted. That's that's all you wanted. So you know, you 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 walked up to the guy. Now I'm assuming that's that's the manager, right? So I'm assuming you 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 yeah, talk to you you talk to uh maybe the the cashier before the manager yeah. came over so yeah what what happened what yeah, what led true. up what led up to to the manager coming into the picture well i walked around uh because normally i stop at that burger king that's where i get i like whoppers you know i like their hamburgers and so normally about twice a month i'll go up there uh to stop at that uh, burger king because usually it's on my way to a pick up a trailer and we service fedex out at the airport so that's actually where i was headed and it's on the way so i figured man it's lunch time i'll hit that and then just hit on out there to the airport pick up a trailer and be gone it was going to be a good plan and so normally i go in uh obviously to get at my uh, you know to go burger or whatever and just go get in my truck so uh, i noticed that the doors were closed and i said okay that shouldn't be too big too big a problem and so uh, I'm tired of going to speak with or wherever. It's just getting peanuts and some bad gum, you know, right. chocolate or something. I wanted a hamburger, a good one, because that gets old after a while, or chips. And so uh, I get up to the window, and I look down. It's one of them trip ones. You know, these two, the old ones, they used to have that beam sticking out where it would trigger, and I was trying to yell into the speaker, which that didn't work. So I walked around to the first window. Mm -hmm. And there was a lady there, and uh, I, I obviously she got startled. I guess it kind of shocked her because she was looking down. When she looked up, I'm right there, and I just said, "Hey, lady, I just would like to buy a hamburger." Mm -hmm. uh, I said, "I'm in that truck there, and I can't fit through your drive-through." And then she told me that she couldn't serve me because I wasn't in a car. Okay. And I just was very nice and just tried to explain. I understand that lady, but y'all, I can't come in to get my get a an order, you know, and. Uh, I just would like to buy a hamburger and I'll get out of your way and go on. And she said, well, you'll have to talk to my manager up there. And so I said, this might be a little interesting. That's when I got my phone started recording. That's okay. what you see, okay. you know, <laughs> after I'd already told him before I even started the video that I can't get in that truck and get in the drive through. I just, you know, and nobody was, uh, I've had one lady one time buy me some biscuits at Hardee's when I was in line because I wasn't in a car. Right. And that was so, such a, uh, you know, a nice thing to do, but right. there was no one at all yeah, in the you, line yeah, at all. Yeah, you can see it in the video. Hey. It wasn't, it actually, it yeah. was like maybe one car that came, that, that came around yeah. after you got finished, uh, you know, finished with the video. Yeah. And then you, I could have asked them and a lot, a lot of times they'll do it for you. I mean, the, and uh, so the manager, that's just what happened. The, ma the manager didn't, I mean, he, he didn't take your situation into 
any type of consideration. Like, no, not at all. I mean, like, you know, you, you told them that you was in the truck and, and everybody know this pandemic is going on. When, when was this? Was this, now it looked like it was back up in March sometime. So was this back before the, no, this before, last- before the heat is on or is it when the heat is on? No, that's when the heat is on. This is Tuesday of last week. Wow. Yeah, so it's seven, eight, nine, nine, nine days, days ago. ago. Yeah. And he yeah. and like I said before, under no circumstances he 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 wouldn't uh, he 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 couldn't help you out. I mean, like I said, like I said in my video, all you wanted was a hamburger. 99 cent. Right. You know, here, here's a dollar. You- here's a dollar. I'll stand on the side because you know, somebody said in my comment about, you know, about the liability because I kept, in my head, I kept, you know, saying, where's the liability at? But somebody in my comment uh, said that uh, the liability came into play if somebody were would have ran you over in the, in the drive-thru. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know, you got people that come through the drive-thru, they play on their phones, they're not paying attention yeah. and all like that. So I can understand I can understand now where the liability was was at and what he was saying. But I mean, you're a grown ass man, bro. You would have you know, you would have made the order, step back, you know, cars come, you know, zoom and pass and all like that. Get finished, bring the order up to the window, hand it to you and go about your business. Yeah, yeah. And uh, obviously, they um, they since have apologized. I don't know if you've seen the news story. Yeah, on yeah, Channel yeah. They, news yeah I, I said uh, I, I said in my video that they did apologize to you, but I think what they should have did was to reach out to you and say, "Here, Chris, here's a free here here's a free meal on us for for your trouble." Did did did, did they do yeah, that? That would have been nice. <laughs> no, See, no. That's yeah. Yeah. Now they didn't, and uh, yeah, see me, it, you know, and it is what it is. But and like I, you know, I thought at this time everybody's needing business. Mm-hmm. Everybody, you know, and so I figured, well, she they want business any way it would come in, right? You know, and I know their policy, this, that, and the other, but it it had been what I was told. It had been changed, and he hadn't got the memo yet. That's what it came down to. <laughs> what they said. He, he haven't got pretty the memo much. yet, pretty much. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I, and, uh, I, I would. I, I would see. That, I would. That, that's just the issue you have, you know, as far as trucking trying to get something to eat right there. You know, but they had their dining room closed, you right? Know, so there was no way, unless you was in a car, you was going to get anything, right? You know. I mean, because some places when this thing started. The, the dining rooms are blocked off. You could still go in to the restaurant and and make your right. order, you know, and, and do your takeout. That's why I was surprised when he actually said that the dining room is closed. Like, okay, y'all not doing takeout? Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. and and for consideration for the driver. So let me ask you this, man. Let me ask you this. If... Their driver, they the ones that bring them their stock, their food, and all like that. Do you think he would have did his driver like that? I don't know. He got some food, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, but that's just you know. And of course, they changed their policy after it, you know, kind of went, I guess, viral and uh, yeah, and took off yeah, like that, of, and yeah, that a, lot people, a lot of people off. Yeah, a lot and, of people, uh, especially after uh, Transportation Nation. Uh, picked up the uh, pick up the news. They uh, they they you know they blasted them hard on that. So so hopefully the changes you know hopefully the changes is made over there. Maybe maybe next time you go there and the, and the manager would recognize you and hopefully he'll apologize to you and hopefully give you a free meal next time, man. That's crazy. Yeah, it would be nice, but you know, and the whole thing. I just wanted. Uh, I hoped it would bring a little light. I didn't think it would bring this much light. To the, to the, you know, this is just a trickle down effect of what's going on in in our nation right now, mm-hmm. and it's hitting our end of the business. You know, in transportation, this is just one of the problems that we're having. And and like I told everybody else, if you don't feed the drivers, y'all ain't gonna get fed. Exactly. You know? <laughs> you know? Exactly. And that's just what it boils down to. So, and because uh, we supply, you know. That's what's up, man. So Nashville, Tennessee, man. Oh man, you. Um... 
Would was you affected by the uh, tornadoes uh, a while back? Matter of fact, uh, <laughs> I wasn't personally, but I had picked up. I was out in uh, Mount Juliet, which is just about fifteen miles or so, right outside east of Nashville, and they got hit extremely hard, mm. extremely hard. A uh, big industrial area, big trucking hubs out there, and I'm, I, I've got several trailers that we're going to pick up that we can haul some of them we can't some of them are just going to have to uh actually scrap them there on the yard they're going to have to cut them and scrap them wow but yeah we're and that, they got hit extremely hard yeah, a couple and, of, and a lot of different yeah neighborhoods in nashville got hit hard my, my buddy uh drives for night transportation and he said his hub out there got got hit pretty hard too yeah, there was a lot, and, and even out in West Nashville by John C. Toon Airport, there's another airport, kind of where it's not, it's a smaller airport than the big ones, kind of where all the stars go, you know, they're private planes, but it got hit hard, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of industry around there. It's close to the Tennessee State Prison area. They got really hit. So, Ooh. But, yeah, they, uh, it's it's been tore up a little bit, and, of course, this virus thing coming in kind of hampers the cleanup yeah. because everybody can't come, and it's social distancing, you know, so it's kind of, it's a slower process than normal, uh, but, you know, uh, they it's bouncing back pretty good. I mean, you know, thankful we're working, but uh, this uh, is what it is for this, everybody right this now. This thing you know? is a new normal, man. It, it's a new normal. So yeah. what? So what's the new normal for you? What what has this pandemic for you has has made changes? What what, what changes you you made since this pandemic? uh started and what are you and what advice or what are you going to continue to do after the uh after everything said and done well i think it's made us all more aware <laughs> for one i'm washing my hands a whole lot more. exactly uh, i'm being very you know being very aware of where i'm at who i'm around uh thankfully a lot of the places i go uh, of course, probably everybody knows, uh, you know, we'll only allow maybe one person in. Some won't allow anybody in. Yeah, that's, that's what's going on with me. It's, it's a couple of, yeah. it's a couple of, uh, it's a couple of uh, places I've been to so far that they, they don't even, it's one driver in at a time. Uh, just slide yeah. your paperwork up under the door. Uh, call this number. Leave, leave the paperwork in the mailbox. Yeah, is yeah, yeah, and this is probably going to be a new normal for uh, probably a good while, you know. So you kind of got to get used to it, and you just have to adjust. And I mean, you know, when I uh, I've got luckily I found some Clorox wipes because uh, they're very scarce right yes, now. Yes, it is. And I just got spray alcohol. I, I put straight alcohol into a little sprayer, and I spray my hands, and I wipe down my truck when I leave. I wipe down where I touch, and I just try to be. It's made me a whole lot more aware because I have to be safe. Because if I bring this home to my wife, she had lupus; it could kill her. Ooh, you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm, I'm really every day trying to be as conscious. Now, you know, you you, you can only do what you can do. You you do your best. Do your you know? do your grandkids Try to be consciously aware? You, you mentioned grandkids. Yeah. Do do your grandkids stay with you? Yeah, I got three of them living with me right now. Yeah, that's where you got to be a little bit more careful uh what you're doing out here yeah. because you got young kids and you don't want to bring that around uh young kids. So Yeah. Wow. And uh, but this we just uh, it's just making me a whole lot more aware of what I'm doing, where I'm at. Thankful to be working, but also I have you have to work smart now. You know, you have to really pay attention. Don't take it lightly because it, this 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 you know, it, people are dying. You know, there's people recovering. That's great. But there's also people dying, and it could kill you. So I don't want no part of this. <laughs> man. All right, Chris. But, hey, thank you for coming on, man. I really do appreciate you uh, you coming on, sharing your experience with us and all like that. I got some, uh, I got some, quick, yeah, no I got some quick questions for you. It's, uh, all right. I got some quick questions for you. Let me uh, shuffle the deck here. Shuffle the deck. Let's see what we got. And the first question is, first question, if there was a sandwich named after you, <laughs> what would be on it? <laughs> <laughs> a sandwich. Go figure. <laughs> uh, foot 
long? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, uh, Slim Jim, I guess. I don't He's know. Slim Sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. All right, so check know. this out. If you had to delete all but three apps from your smartphone, which one would you keep? All but three? All but three. I'd have to keep Facebook. Mm-hmm. I keep up with a lot of people. Um, I do watch my Xfinity. I got I got, I got, got cable on my phone. Okay. So I'd keep that That's app. That's two. And... Uh, at least my photos, I guess. Your photos, that's an app so or whatever. Those, I don't know. Those, those, yeah, those I, got, three. I got some good pictures. Now, I think, yeah. I, I think for me, I will say Facebook, Instagram, and my contact list. Because I, I I would think the contact list is a is an app. Can you can you consider your contact list the app? I guess. <laughs> yes, you can. I guess you can consider your contact list the app. I get. I'm not that great with all the new technology. I'm still. Uh, of course, I grew up. We're fifty. I, I, I you know we yeah, grew we, up with all well, this. Well, you know what? Now I, growing up with it. I, I um. Fortunately for me, I grew up around technology, so I you know I had all. I, I had all the all the game systems that you that you can ever think of. You think of a game system, Atari, ColecoVision, Intellivision. I had them. So yeah, I, I was I was tech savvy all the way down. Now my mom's on the other hand, ooh no no, she <laughs> she just she got her she just recently got into a tablet, and last week she asked me how to Skype. And try to explain yeah. that to a sixty-something year old uh, year old mother, uh, grandmother of three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah, the the frustration level. <laughs> Come on, mom. I thought I just told yeah. you how to do it, but I just want you to tell me again. I just told you. You know that's yeah. <laughs> what yeah. was the uh, yeah? What was the worst job you ever had? Ooh. Uh... Let's say the worst job. Oh, well, I was I was an EMT in one of my first ones. I dug some ditches a little bit part time. Uh, EMT was the worst job you thought? I I thought EMT would probably be exciting. It was when you first start. Oh, you know you're excited. You get. (laughs) You get to run, you know, in the sirens, uh-huh. and, you know, and they, but when you're, when you're out at two or three in the morning in the ambulance and you're cleaning blood and vomit up out of the ambulance, oh. <laughs> the excitement wears off real quick, especially when you're running 24 hour shifts and you're about half dead. <laughs> so what was some of the, what was some of the, uh, what was some of the, what was some of the, what was some of the horror stories as, as an EMT, man? What? Oh, I have a lot. I was, I was doing about six, seven years. Uh, we had a hang, and I, I do remember distinctly. And uh, we've had several suicides. Matter of fact, here in Nashville, um, I worked in a. Uh, my dad actually ran ambulance services for a while in several different counties at one time in Tennessee. So I had worked at a lot of counties, and we had a body contract here in Nashville because Metro uh, doesn't do the bodies; they contract it out to a private service. Mm-hmm. And so we used to pick up a lot of dead bodies, but one of them I I do remember an emergency call we went to, and uh, it was a suicide. We thought it was a suicide attempt. And being in Humphreys County, which is a very, um, it's a a big county, but not a lot of people. There's not a lot of, uh, and back then, not a lot. It still had dirt roads. You still had, and and so you only had one ambulance service number in the whole county. Mm Mm-hmm. So it would take you a long time. If you're out in the sticks, it's going to take a while to get there. So we get out there, and he had hung himself with a tire swing. Mm. He had wrapped the tire swing around his neck and just dropped. And we can always tell when people really mean to kill themselves. He could have pushed up, but he didn't. And so I do remember the stretch marks around his neck, uh, the color. Um, Was he? Of course, he he survived. His sister was there. He he survived it? Oh, no, he He, died. He was dead when we got there. 
Um, and uh, we've, I mean, several car wrecks, pretty, you know, how nasty things. How was but, it now? Now did now you said being the first time, how, how was seeing, how, how was seeing your first, I'm going to say parish body affected you when when you first seen it oh it'll affect anybody <laughs> well um of course you have to touch them i mean you have to pick them up you have to uh, a lot of times they defecate on themselves uh we've had one and i've had this happen a couple times where uh a lot of times you can when you set them up in an ambulance or whatever they'll let out a uh, a breath and you'll think they're alive Oh my God. But that was just air that was stuck in their yes, air that was stuck in their lungs. And when you jarred them or something or set them down, it released and it came across their vocal cords. And you'd think, oh my goodness. Oh my God. You know, so the first time I heard that was a little weird. Oh, okay. Uh, that that was scary. Uh, but uh, after about one or two, you just, it, you just get you, pretty you much used go to numb it. a little bit. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's not a big deal after that. All right, Chris, man, what are you most excited about right now? Excited about right now? Um, I know this may sound funny, but the times we're living in. <laughs> I know that's good. People are like, what? But I think, yeah, you know, God put us on this earth for such a time as right now. And I'm a Christian man. I believe in the Bible. Um, I think we're all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. uh, but I do see what's happening right now, what's going on in our society and what's been going on in the past several years. And if you just read the Bible halfway, you can see a lot of similarities, if you want to put it that way, okay. uh, of what, uh, what our society is becoming, what it is, and where we're going. And so I put my trust and faith in God through Jesus. And so, I do too. I, um, you know what, I, you know, I, I'm not now. The only, the only thing is with me is that I don't, you know, I don't go to church. But by my faith and my belief is in the Lord Jesus Christ. Though I, I believe, right, I, right. I believe, you know, he. he I, I got to admit, you know, for you know the past, the the past uh, little things that I have went through in the past. I I I am truly blessed. So, you know, and I can't yeah. and I can't thank nobody else but him for all that. So yeah. Right. I agree. And I, we're I not agree perfect, with you. You know. <laughs> I, and I've had mine, man. You know, I, I've got a past just like everybody's got a past, but thank thank the Lord he's forgiven me of that. Exactly. And I you know, it helps me every day. Now I'm not a perfect guy. Uh, we, we fail and we stumble exactly. with fishes, but we just get back up and say, God, please forgive me. Yes, Let's get back on the yes, road. Sir. And, yes, and, sir. Uh, keep, keep trucking. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> that's what you got to do, man. And that's why I tell people, you know, yeah. I, I tell people, you know, a lot of people don't think. A lot of, you know, I did a video about, you know, God's plan and, you know, what what we going through right now. You know, I, I don't think it's God's plan to destroy the earth, but it's God's plan to, it's, it's like, you know, you, you, you want to put your faith in these athletes. You want to put your faith in these uh, superstars and you want to put your faith in, 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 in money and all like that. Well, look at what I did. No, no sports. Right. No concerts. Right. No theaters. And and yeah. the economy is taking a hit. So yeah. So yeah, man. But it, but it's you know there's great things coming out of it too with families back together mm -hmm. around the table spending time mm -hmm. you know so. Good thing there's bad things, but good things I believe will come out of the bad it's, things that God intended in the first place for us to be doing. You know? All right, Chris, last question, man, before we get up out of here, what would people look, right. what would people look at us or wait, let me rephrase that. What would people look back at us 50 years from now and be shocked and all by? 50 years. Wow. We're both 50 now. You mean y'all, <laughs> you mean y'all drove trucks? <laughs> Do, during the pan, probably be during, driverless do, trucks going by during then, the uh, pandemic, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. That is what's up. Well, Chris, man, thank you very much for coming on, man. I really do appreciate it, man. Uh, no problem, bro. Definitely, uh, definitely stay safe out here, man. Stay safe. Uh, and, and hey, you know, don't don't be no stranger, bro. You know, don't be no stranger. So you know, you got my number now. You can give me a call. We can chop it up anytime. All right, brother. I appreciate. All it. right, I appreciate you. No, I appreciate you for everything you do, driver. All right, you too, man. All right, now you, <laughs> you take it easy and thanks for coming on, man. I appreciate it. All right, God bless. God you, bless sir. you too, man. All right, bye bye. Chris saying, everybody. Chris saying, yes, sir. My man, hey, truck driver for twenty years had some uh, had some good uh, had some good experience, some good stories. Wow, what about that story, the EMS story, man? That was woo, and um, and hopefully, you know, that Burger King situation. Hopefully, you know, like I said, if he goes back. And, you know, just happen to, you know, go there and get some, you know, get something to eat. Hopefully that uh, Burger King manager will apologize to him and maybe, and maybe, maybe give him a free meal. Well, that is it, everybody. I want to thank you for joining me today. I really do appreciate it. If you guys want to, if, uh, if you guys want more content like this and more, don't forget to like, comment, share. And hit that bell for more content like this. I am your humble host, Lockout Men. And this is Lockout Men Podcast. Yes, sir. Yo, that's all I got to say. Until next time, I'll come back with another video. I don't know when, but we'll come back with another video. But until then, we, well, wait, wait. Stay blessed, all right? Stay blessed. Stay faithful. You know, and as he said before, God will forgive your sins. So if you done something in the past, just just bow your head for a minute and just say, Lord, please forgive my sins. Make me a better person. Make me a better truck driver. Keep me from from doing what I did yesterday. If I did something messed up yesterday, make sure that I won't do it the next day. And on that note, everybody, we are gone.